Where are we? In the Raccoon Library? Yeah. And what did we just do? Found the geocache. This building over here that looks like a Roman Colosseum is the central branch of the Vancouver Public Library. It is over nine stories tall and has over one and a half million books and other volumes in there. And one of them is a geocache that we found. We're gonna show you that, plus a few other library geocaches that we have found, as well as try to make our own library geocache. So let's get to it. When you think about geocaches, because I know that you do, you're probably thinking of a container hidden somewhere outside. And yes, that is true, but sometimes geocaches can be hidden indoors. Sometimes they're in shops or in visitor centers, and often they're in libraries. If you're interested in hiding a geocache this year, 2024, Geocaching HQ has released a whole list of monthly themes, suggestions, if you will, to give you ideas of some geocaches that you can create. January's theme is books and libraries, and Geocaching HQ published a whole bunch of really cool library geocaches on their blog, which we will link in the description below. This inspired us to want to create our own library geocache. Hey, Camilo, what should we do for our library geocache? Um, there's two things. We could either hide it in the fake book or something, or we could hide it in the library itself. You can decide. Those are my two ideas that come to mind. Thanks. We got some work to do. What? So I think we have what we need to get started. In the meantime, check out this video of the very first library geocache we've ever found. It was in the library of the Metrotown area of the city of Burnaby. Now this was 2021, so masks and hand sanitizer, definitely some tools of the trade that we needed at that time. This one was a mystery cache, so we had a little bit of work to do. We had to search for geocaching in the library catalog. And you can see that there's already books about geocaching in their collection. So once we had the code to know which section this was in, we had to find the specific shelf and narrow it down in order for us to find the geocache. Being stealthy is pretty common knowledge when you're geocaching, but it is especially needed when you're indoors, when there are people working and studying and actually looking for like real books on the shelves and not some kind of hidden container. But you know, sneaking around, it just makes it that much more fun. Okay, so for our little project, we wanted to make a hollow book uh, and hide some stuff inside it. And we found one hardcover book from our collection that I was willing to sacrifice, but I kind of changed my mind. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. There are a couple reasons why I don't think this one is going to work. It's, you can see that it is kind of thin. It's not really thick and you kind of want like a big like dictionary size one so that you can hide some good stuff in it. Also, it's got like pictures, and color images of artwork in here. I just, I just don't want to take a knife to this book. I mean, also I haven't finished reading it yet. So there's that. Okay, so this one is out, which means we gotta go get a book. Okay, we are stepping out, but meanwhile, check out this other library geocache. We are here in front of the Tommy Douglas Library. It's one of the Burnaby Public Libraries. Tommy Douglas, of course, being a labor leader and a social democratic uh, politician and one of the early champions of Medicare, our public healthcare system, so, Thanks, Tommy. We are looking for a mystery cache, and we had to answer some historical questions about who Tommy Douglas was. Through those answers, find uh, one of the codes that leads to a geocache inside the library. So let's go check it out. Library caches aren't just in public libraries. They're also in a lot of little free libraries that you can find all over your neighborhood. Okay, I don't actually have footage of us finding one in a little library because I didn't record at the time. So here is a reenactment of that experience. Well, I think a free little library is the direction that we want to take this geocache. We already know someone who has one set up, so we've asked them for permission. We're waiting to hear back. Now would be a great time to subscribe 
And if you're liking what you see, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and share this with a friend. Before we can show you that update, we gotta actually make the thing. Here's what we're thinking. Plan originally was go to a thrift store and find like an old Reader's Digest. But then I remember that you can just buy a hollowed out book that you can store stuff in already. If I could find one of those, it would save us a lot of time. On a hunch, I went down to a winner's because I swear I would seen some there before. I looked around through their book section with nothing really promising. And then I spotted it a fake book storage box thingy. But as you can see, it was just way too big and it wasn't gonna work out. But then I opened it and then inside of that was another fake book thingy. And then inside of that was another fake book thingy. And that was the perfect size for our geocache. And here it is, check it out. So you can see that like just by the thickness of that, a much better option. You can put way more stuff inside this. It's already ready to go. And also it has this like satisfying magnet. Oh yeah. Also it's called World Explorations and it has a map. That's already perfect for a geocache right there. It's so thematically on point. So the inspiration for this one was the one that we found at the central branch of the Vancouver Public Library. Let's head back there and check it out. This one was definitely trickier to find. I mean, there were nine stories in that building, but seven of them are accessible to the public and there are millions of books and volumes. Also, this was a mystery cache, so there was some work on our part in order to find which stack it happened to be in. And there was a red herring that led us in a different direction. But in the end, we did figure it out. We found that cool little hollow book that they have in there. And inside there was room for swag and of course the logbook. So we would love to hear your experiences on finding library geocaches. Let us know in the comments, maybe throw the GC code in there and tell us a little bit of why you like that geocache. What was special about it? Let us know. So this video is part of a series where we build geocaches every month based on the theme suggested by Geocaching HQ. Next month, we're gonna be doing birdhouses. Those ones should be pretty tweet. So make sure to subscribe. As for this project, we customized some swag by drawing and laminating bookmarks. We threw in some book related stickers and even some of our buttons. And of course, we threw in the logbook. And that was it. Actually, no, wait, there's more. We wanted to customize this just a little bit, just to make it a little bit extra. So I took a piece of laminated card and I made a panel that hides the logbook. And it just tucks away right in the back there. So that's just something a little extra. And did I just spoil the location of the logbook? Well, yes, I did. And that's my gift to you, geocachers of YouTube. So now that we finally have everything ready to go, all we gotta do is hide it. Hopefully we can update you on all that soon. Until then, happy caching.